All right, call it. Please mute your phone. Great day, and welcome to the Holy Angel of Light Intercessory Prophetic Prayer Line. I am Apostle Angelique Edwards Cooper. I am the woman Moses. Glory, glory, glory. We are on our day four of fasting and prayer. And when I tell you that the Father is giving us so many revelations, whoo, it is powerful. Glory, glory, glory. I am so excited that he looks upon us to give us this information so that we could be aware, not for fear, but to be aware and be prepared so that we know that we know and that we cannot be deceived by what is here. Glory, glory, glory. I'm going to say some things that you may not take to be, but trust me, it is. And, of course, as always, please take it to the Father to confirm with him, okay, because that's the only way that you're going to know that I am telling you the truth. Glory, glory, glory. What we think is just a story. Most people think the Bible is just a story. It's not really for real. It is for real. And when you in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives you deep revelations about what you're reading. You can read a scripture, and he can give you a revelation. And you'll get a revelation about that scripture, and then the Father will send you back to that scripture again, and you had a whole nother new revelation the way he gave you before, but it's a deeper revelation. So the more you go in him, the more that he reveals. Thank you, Father. Glory, glory. So here we go. Y'all know we like to get into our anointing all prayer, but before we do that, we like to take our deep breath that gets us scented and get us ready to be intentional to step into his presence. So take a deep breath with me in and blow it out slowly. A deep breath in and blow it out slowly. Another one. Blow it out slowly. And this next breath we take in, we're going to take a deep breath. When we blow it out, we're going to blow it out hard. So let's here we go. Take a deep breath in and blow it out hard. Woo, we letting all that negativ- negativity go. All that negativity is gone, and the Holy Spirit has taken care of it. So here we go. We're in our anointing all prayer. Please, if you have your anointing all, get it ready. And um, if you're able to, if you're not driving or anything, please um, raise your hands, okay? Here we go. Our Father who art in the skies, holy is your name. Your kingdom comes, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our debts as you forgive our debtors. And forgive us for our trespasses as you forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the power and the glory forever and ever. Let it be so. For if we forgive men and their trespasses, then our Father will forgive us. But if we do not forgive men and their trespasses, neither will our Father forgive us. We must know that if we do not forgive, we will not be forgiven. Glory, glory, glory. Heavenly Father, as we apply this anointing all breaking free from sin, we break free from family generational curses, those curses of negative patterns of thinking, doing, feeling, and responding to certain situations the way how our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and so has responded. We break free from DNA physical curses and illnesses, negative thought patterns and physical ailments that yoke us. We break free of bondage and slavery to sin. For you, Father, have broken the bands of our yokes and made us walk upright and erect as free women and men. Therefore, we break every curse, every generational curse and yoke that is upon us in our family line. And we anoint the back of our neck. We will rescind any invitation to evil that we have been given knowingly and unknowingly. We have found spiritual freedom in God alone. We are intentionally seeking with our heart and soul to seek to, to excuse me, with our heart and soul to step into your presence. God, our soul and our spirit are in alignment with you, Adonai. And now we anoint our eyes very, very little because it will burn. Holy Spirit, let us see through your eyes and not our own. Holy Spirit, guide us as our focus will remain on you and we will have a teachable heart. For you, Adonai, will instruct and teach us in the way we should go. You will guide and counsel us with your eyes. Your eyes see the path you have laid for us. You will have a teachable heart so that your instruction is imparted to us, guiding our steps today. And now we anoint our foreheads. 
As our forehead signifies our mind and your thoughts are higher than ours. Therefore, we put on the mind of the Messiah. Holy Spirit, let our mind be of your mind and not our own. Holy Spirit, keep peace in our mind and our thoughts, our hearts, our souls, and spirit. That peace that surpasses all understanding. And let it flow throughout our entire being. We shall have the mind of the Messiah, the Son of life and truth, and do hold the thoughts and feelings and purposes of his heart. Thank you for showing us the path to justice and righteousness and the way of understanding. As on not, we set our thoughts on things of you today. We put on our helmet of salvation and we anoint our minds, recognizing and acknowledging that we've been given the mind of the Messiah, that we can do all things through the Messiah who strengthens us. And now we anoint our mouth, every little on your tongue. Hey, I so so we cut it over so Yes, daddy. Woo! As the mouth signifies the word we speak and it sees we so, and we choose of our free will to sow seeds of life and not death. Holy Spirit, let us speak from your mouth and not our own. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight, O Adonai, our firm, impenetrable rock and our redeemer. Adonai, we recognize and we, we recognize the words we speak have power today. We will align our heart with yours so that our words are acceptable and pleasing to you. And now we anoint our ears. Holy Spirit, let us hear with your ears and not our own. For our ears signify obedience, and we will only be here open to hearing God's voice so that we will obey your voice only. For we are your sheep and we are your own. And we're listening to your voice, and you know us, and we follow you, and you only. Adonai, we are your sheep, and we can hear your voice, and we will follow no other. And now we anoint our right thumb. As the right hand signifies the covenant. Yeshua, your blood speaks on our behalf in the heavenly court, rendering a verdict in our favor. We agree with what the blood has spoken about the covenant promises that we have through you. And now we anoint our right toe. As the feet signifies authority through Yeshua, and our feet are prepared with the gospel of good news. Holy Spirit, let our feet be your feet and not our own. Let our feet only walk where you want, Adonai. Behold, you have given us authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability over all the power that the enemy possesses, and nothing shall in any way harm us. Father, your authority empowers our feet to walk in your ways. You order our steps and you prepare us to stand firm in your promises. We will pull the truth down from the books of heaven, the spiritual realm. Our mind, your mind, the earth, the physical realm. Thank you. And we say to Yeshua, the Messiah, the faithful and trustworthy witness, the firstborn, the prince, who will the kings of the earth, to him who ever loved us and had come once and for all, loosed and freed us from our sins by his own blood to him, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Let it be so. And because of this anointing, we will walk in kingdom alignment which is to live in the fullness of our salvation, not defeated, doubtful, and depressed. And we will use these tools from you, Father, that we can use to speak to the spiritual realm. For we're not one against flesh and blood, but against dark forces, and we will overcome them in his spirit. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnival, mighty in God, but the pulling down, the overthrowing, and the destruction of strongholds, for casting down arguments and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity as we refuse arguments and theories and reasons and every pride and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of the Messiah, the anointed one. Being in readiness to punish, rebuke, bind, and loose every insubordinate for their disobedience when we own our own submission and obedience as a church, the body of the Messiah, the temple is fully secured and complete. As we will walk in agreement with our Father who art in the skies and heed his instruction so that we will always remain blessed in the face of adversity. Thereby, never ever given the evil one, Satan, and his helpers a way to curse us with curses that have legal access to us. We will choose to not ever walk in our carnal mind and just come in out of agreement with our Father. He will always be first in our heart and soul, thereby not allowing the devil to be a foothold in our life. We will obey the voice of our Father, our Yah, to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which he commands us today. We will remain in complete alignment so that no curse will come upon us and cause confusion and illnesses in the body. For we are co-heirs with the Messiah, and we have an inheritance in our Father. We agree with the promises of God written in his book. 
We're calling on his heavenly promises to be drawn down to earth in our life for your name's sake. We're now telling the devil, the evil powers of the world, that we're not only seated with God in the heavenly places in the spirit, but that we're aligning our soul, our mind, our spirits, our will, and emotions with him in the physical. We're taking what is written in the heavenly books and commanding that they be manifested through our earthen vessels, our bodies which are his. We're telling the spiritual realm that we recognize and know and agree that we are anointed and empowered by the Holy Spirit to walk in divine healing, divine protection, divine knowledge, divine power and authority, and divine love from the Creator. The enemy will not rob us of our healthy family curses and negative thought patterns. And now we anoint our hearts, both spiritually and physically, to guard them, keeping our hearts in line with God's words about our health as we represent his divine glory and not overcome by the purpose of doubt. But as we think in our hearts, so it shall be. We will keep our hearts with all diligence. We will guard our heart, and above all, we guard it for out of the clothes and springs of life. We will not be tempted into negative thinking. We will not take every. We will take every thought captive and make it obedient to the Messiah. For we're in agreement with God's words and anointed and intentionally set apart for His purposes. We will diligently heed the voice of the Adonai our God and do what is right in His sight and give ear to all His commands and keep all His statutes. And He will put none of the diseases on us, which He has brought on the Egyptians to the ten places of disobedience, but he is the highest, our Father who heals us. So protection. We will not forget Yah's goodness. We will not step out from under Yah's divine protection. We will not forget about the price that was paid on our behalf. We will not forget how the Holy Spirit leads us through the valley of the shadow of death, protecting us from evil. And we step into your presence and we seek him. And we anoint our stomach. This is our shield of protection. As the enemy is prowling around looking to devour, we will arise and oil our shield for our deadly foe is lurking at the gates. This makes us agile and prepare for war, for we have the shield of faith and we claim protection of God over our life, letting the enemy know he has nothing on us because our faith is in the Messiah alone. We lift up over our covenant shield of save and faith over all upon which will quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. We know that God is not keeping knowledge from us. The devil will not change his view of our good father as he did with Adam and Eve in the garden. No doubt, no fear, no beguiling, no seducing, no cunningness, no corruption, no insecurity, no inferiority. Woo! The Holy Spirit who anoints us, who is our comforter, our counselor, our helper, our intercessor, our our advocate, our strengthener, and our standby that remains with us forever. We know and recognize the spirit of truth. We receive it and welcome and take to heart and know and recognize him, for he lives with us constantly and will be in us. He will not leave us as orphans, comfortless, desolate, bereaved, forlorn, helpless. He will come back to us. We know that we are anointed for a purpose, and you will guide us into all truth. We agree with Yah's words and have anointed ourselves with all. Many blessings, praise, adoration, commendation, and eulogy be to the Yah and the Father of our Adonai, the Messiah, with every spiritual given by the Spirit, blessing in the heavenly realm, for the unity of the Spirit by the action of His power that is at work within us can carry out His purpose and do super abundantly for over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and dreams, and kingdom power. Woo! There's the power. Woo! We will not be underestimated. The power that we have been given. We will not only know that Yah's word is true, but we will apply it practically. Satan will not keep us from using the power that we have in the Messiah. We will pray for all things that are written in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For you have given us all the authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strips and ability over all the powers that the enemy possesses and nothing shall in any way harm us. Yes! We are tapping into your power. We will live anointed in power. We are anointed as a royal priesthood, a holy nation. God's special possession called out of darkness into the marvelous light. We agree that we're free in the Messiah and set and free any part of us that has been held captive in the darkness that once consumed us is no longer master over us, that we can now see and are empowered to give a message of faith that violently displaying what Messiah's freedom looks like. For the words we now speak are from the authority of the Father, for the way, the truth, the life that we're in the Father and that the Father is in, in us, that what we say is not of our own authority and our own accord, but the Father 
Father who lives continually in us and does the work, his work, his own miracles and deeds of power. For the promise of the Spirit assures us most solemnly that if and when we steadfastly know in him, we will ourselves be able to do the things that our Father does. And we will do even greater things than these because we go to the Father. And he will grant whatever we command in his name as forgetting all that I am, so that the Father may be glorified and restored them through the Son. So I am who I am and what I am and will be what I will be. And we shall say this to everyone, that I am has sent me to you. He has imparted the same authority within those. We now overstand our anointing that we can now pray powerful prayers that declare to the spiritual realm. God is for us, not against us. Prayers that would keep his covenant promises and empower us to do his will as we engage the physical realm with alignment with the spiritual realm. Let it be so in the holy name of Yeshua's name. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this atmosphere, in the airwaves, in the universe, Holy Spirit. Take over because we submit to your authority, Holy Spirit. We submit to your authority. We can't do it without you, don't want to do it without you. So, Holy Spirit, fill us. Fill us, Holy Spirit. Give us peace in our mind, our hearts, our souls, our spirit. That peace that surpasses all understanding. And Holy Spirit, if there is anything, anything that is in us that is hindering us from receiving this word that you have to give to us today, we move it right now. Woo! Glory. And fill that void. Fill that space back with your spirit, Holy Spirit. Do not allow the enemy to come in and take over, Holy Spirit, for it is your time. It is your time, Holy Spirit, so do what it is that you do. We love you. We thank you. Yeshua, we love you. We thank you. Yahuwah, we love you. We thank you. Oh, blessings to all. In the holy name of Yeshua, let it be so. Woo! I'm on fire, y'all. I'm on fire. Let me tell you something. This word, the Father has been, since we've been um, doing our fasting and prayer, and this is day four of our fasting and prayer, he is having me to go deeper into demons. Woo, glory. Now y'all understand why we're fasting and praying, because you've got to be in the spirit to talk about the spirit and to have the power to come against the spirit that might be trying to come against you while you're talking against those demons. When he says that we got to fast and pray, we got to be in total obedience to do so. For he knows what is good for us. We can't say, no, I'm not going to do it because I want my chicken, because I want my steak, because I want this. We got to do it because the Father told us to do it, because he knows what it is that we need at that time. And it ain't chicken and steak. It's him. Woo! Glory, glory, glory. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way. So this prophetic word is about the blood. Hey. So he is he has been having me dealing with the demons more intensely. So first, you need to know what a demon is. Mm. So the Hebrew word is shed. Ha. <laughs> and that is a malignant devil. Okay? Now the word devil is very important. And like I told y'all uh, when we started this, I'm going to be very vigilant in making sure that you understand the word and that you stop using the old words and get into the new words. And you're going to understand why in a minute, why it's important for you to get into the new words that the Father said that we need to say. Okay? Now, the word devil is very important because it speaks to the truth. And the truth is what? Very important. And it sets you free, right? Devil spelled backwards. I wish I, uh, oh, do I have my, yeah, okay. Y'all, y'all forgive me for my handwriting now. But we, we like to see stuff. So, um, the Viatin is the spirit of, um, 
reversing things. So that's why he created the alphabet. See, the alphabet, which is the Hebrew, um, the Hebrew language of letters, which is equal, even equal. Check this. Check this out. Woo! Which is even equal to the twenty-two letters of the Lord. So every um, alphabet letter corresponds to the twenty-two letters of the law that you find in Psalm um, 119. That's the book I wrote, y'all. Hey, come on, come on, Holy Spirit. So um, we're going to go there real quick, and I'm just going to give you a couple of, 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 of the words. Hopefully it's in this particular Bible. I'm about to have to get my other Bible. Um, let's see. Because my other Bible, man, I, it, it is crazy. Okay, so the first uh, uh, letter is a leaf, which is what? The leaf of that, right? And it's spelled A-L-E-P-H. That means something, my people. And if you don't know what that means, then you're not going to know what Psalms 119, 1 through 8 means. Once you know this, and that's why I wrote the book, once you know this, then you'll know how to govern your life. Ooh, kind of look what this is. Then you have um, Beth, okay, B-E-T-H, all right? That is Psalms 119, 9 through 16, okay? Again, that means something else as well. And I don't have my book on me to um, tell you what these letters are, but um, that means something as well. And then um, then you have Gimel, Gimel. Okay, that's Psalms 119 to 124. Then you have Dalif, and that's Psalms 119, 25 through 32. All of those correspond to a different law that governs your body and governs your life. And that is where you get your 613 commandments from. And again, I, um, I wrote the book, um, I'm, I'm working, y'all. It, it's, it's so much going on. Um, uh, uh, trying to see how I can come up with the funds to get this, this book printed. Trusting in the Father to do it because it's his book. And, and I know that um, it needs to, to, to get out because it's going to help some, some people immensely. It's beautiful. It's lovely. I love it. <laughs> okay, well, here we go. So now Satan came and he made the alphabet. So A, B, C, all of that means something, too, to him, okay? So here we go. So we got devil, right? I don't know if you can see it, but can you see that? You got devil, right? So devil spelled backwards is live, okay? Now, work with me now. So what the Father is telling us, that he, Satan, once lived but is no more, and that he is now a spirit that live through what? Now, we're going to break down live, okay? L-I-V-E, right? And we're going to reverse it because Leviathan is the twisting spirit. It, t- it twists the truth. So now you get L-I-V-E, right? Live, which turns to evil, okay? So let's break it down. Devil spelled backwards means live, which means he is no more. He's now a spirit, but he lives through evil, okay? So now, through who? People. Woo! Glory. Otherwise, you don't see evil because it's a disembodied spirit. It has no body. But you see evil when it's performed by a person. Now, what you need to know is that person is you or I, your husband or your wife, your son or your daughter, your cousin or your uncle, your brother or your sister, your teacher or your pastor, your doctor or your uh, policeman. You, You see where I'm going with this? Okay. Now. 
What you also need to know is that he needs your permission. Why? Because he has no power to us. See, at one time, he was connected to the power source, right? He was connected to the Most High. The Most High took him in, connected him to the power source. He made him the angel over, uh, over music, okay? He was an angel over worship. He was, he was beautiful, all of that, right? But when he transgressed greatly, it was no more. Now, when he was in the garden, now follow me, my people, because you need to know this, okay? It's very, very important. It's going to connect the dots. It's going to put the puzzle together that the puzzle, uh, the pieces are missing, that you don't understand why this stuff is happening. Now, when he got into the Garden of Eden, his purpose was to get in there to do something. Two things, actually three, actually four. His thing was to get in there. Why didn't he go to Adam? Adam was in the garden, but why did he particularly go to the woman? It wasn't because she was the weaker sex. It was because she had something that he needed. Then he wanted to get her to to bite the pomegranate. My people, it is not an apple. If you look at a pomegranate, it looks like an apple. It is the pomegranate. The pomegranate has poppy seeds in them. Guess how many poppy seeds it has in them, my people? 613. Did I not tell you the letters of the law equals 613 commandments? So the pomegranate is symbolizing the 613 commandments, and it was on the tree of life. Also, on this tree of life, set some scrolls. These scrolls were called the scrolls of destiny or what was to happen. So Satan wanted to get in there, get to Eve, have her to transgress against the Most High, touch and eat the pomegranate. The pomegranate has poppy seeds in it. Poppy seeds got cocaine, which they make cocaine from. Eve got high. Cocaine makes you sexually um, um, active, and she had intercourse with Satan. My people, she didn't have intercourse with a snake. She had intercourse with a serpent man. Okay? Now, he was in the garden. He had intercourse with Eve. Thereby, he created a covenant of sin. Mm. How? Because covenants are made through the bloodline, through the blood. Okay? So, that's why you see mafia people and witches making covenants by doing what? Mixing their blood together or draining somebody's blood, right? They'll take a knife, they'll cut their hand, right? And that's, that's like that witch, Maria um, Abramovich, right? She says, take the knife, um, dig it in, in, into your left hand, and, and suck the pain, okay? That's a covenant Right, so when you cut your when you cut your hand and the other person cut their hand, and then they mesh it together, they are inter uh, 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 um, inter inter interlocking the bloodlines, my people, and creating a covenant with Satan. All right, so now Satan mixed his seed with Eve. Eve was supposed to be the first mother after the earth was destroyed, okay, before the earth and its inhabitants. So now let me, let me bring you up to date on this as well, because we think that Adam and Eve was the only being that was on the earth. Nothing else exists. But they told you that the Nephilim, the giants, was there as well, right? And, okay, the earth has been destroyed four times, okay? And each time, and Adam and Eve is made to come back out and replenish the earth. 
each time the Most High destroyed the earth and the inhabitants, he told a certain set of people where to go to to be safe and come back out after the, after the, the cleansing of the earth and replenish it and start all over again, okay? So you don't trust me? All right. The dinosaurs existed 76 trillion years ago. Am I right? Look it up. How come the dinosaurs are not in the Bible? How come we don't have no story on the dinosaurs in the Bible? And the fact that this Adam that we know that's in Genesis, which Genesis is just the genealogy of Isis, okay, is the fact that he was made to be in control of the animals, okay? Why? Because when the dinosaurs existed, you had the herbivores and the carnivores. The herbivores were vegetarian. They ate the plants. They was chilling. They was cool. The carnivores ate the plants, the herbivores, and, and men, Okay? Man had no dominion over the dinosaurs. So the carnivores took over, okay? And the Egyptians at that time made it with the dinosaurs as well. You can look at the, 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 uh, the, the walls and everything. You'll see the mating with dinosaurs and dogs and lions. They made it with all kinds of animals. And they made all these different beings, all right? Okay, so now the Most High said, this time when I cleanse this earth, I want man to be in charge of the animals so that this doesn't happen. This is why we now have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and every creepy, crawly thing. Got it? All right, here we go. Now, so now we have this but it's nowhere in the Bible. So there are books, like I've been telling you, that are missing glory. So there's much, much more to the story. Now, Eve was a virgin, which meant that when her hymen was broken by Satan, that created a blood covenant of sin. Woo! And then... She was impregnated with a child. And guess what that child's name was? Cain. <laughs> the disagreeable seed of Satan's son is Cain. Now, Eve is high. Eve is turned on. Eve goes to Adam and say, take this. It's amazing. It, it feels so good. Just do it. And Adam's like, no, we're not supposed to. She's like, do it, do it. Adam was supposed to stay on the word of the Most High, no matter if it was his wife, no matter if it was daughter, no matter if it was his son, no matter if it was his mother. When the Most High tells you to do something, you do it. That's who your allegiance is to. So Adam said, okay, wife, I'm going to do it. So then Adam ate the pomegranate as well. When Adam ate the pomegranate, Adam became high. Oh, what happened? Wait a minute, my people. My video went out. Okay, excuse me. All right, here we go. Excuse me. Video went out for a minute. So when Adam ate the pomegranate with the 613 poppy seeds, Adam became high. When Adam became high, Adam became sexually turned on and went and had intercourse with Eve. Guess who was his son? Abel. Hence, I will put in a minute between you and, and, and his seed. His seed will bruise your heel, but your seed will crush the head. So Satan's seed will bruise the heel of Abel's 
of, of Adam's seed, but we are to crush the head of the serpent. He kararoto soroto. So now, not only did when they when they um not not only when they ate this pomegranate, right? And and when they ate it, the six hundred and thirteen poppy seeds was was symbolic of the six hundred and thirteen commandment. So when they touched it and when they ate it, they broke all six hundred and thirteen commandments like that. And that's why they trans- transgress so badly. Okay? That's why the Most High was so upset with Satan. That's why he threw him out. Okay? All right. So here we go. So now, up underneath the tree, like I told y'all, was the scrolls of destiny. Right? So up underneath the tree is the, is the tree of life. is the scrolls of destiny. The scrolls of destiny do what? Tell you what's to happen. They read the scrolls. Satan, Eve, and Adam. This is how they became to know about being naked. See, they was walking around in the garden, frolicking, having a good old time with no clothes on, not even worried about anything. But once they become to know of good and evil, when the Most High was looking for them, as he came down, he said, "Where? why are you hiding? Where are you? And they had grabbed the fig leaf and covered themselves up. He knew what they did. So they knew what was to come. Satan knew what was to come. Because of this, they became supreme beings of evil. Mm. God, thank you, Father. He called Holy Spirit. Supreme beings cannot be evil. Let me say that again. Supreme beings cannot be evil. Our bodies were never made for evil. Evil got in through the garden, through the bloodline, through Adam and Eve, okay? And this is why Eve was cursed. This is why us as women go through Painful labor. Do you know why? So that you will know to not make the mistake of sleeping with Satan and bringing forth a seed that is evil. It was punishment. Menstruation, which she did not have, until she transgressed with because it has to do with the seed of Satan. And so during that time, we are cleansing from the blood of Satan. That's why it's an unclean time. That's why you're not supposed to have no sex, none of that. That's why you're in 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 a time of mourning. That's where that came from, my women, Okay, so now they they had the poppy seeds, they read the, the scrolls of destiny, the, the cocaine and it got them high, they sexually aroused. So she had sex with, with, the, with Satan and, and um, Adam. Um, Cain was um, Satan's son and Adam beget Abel. Twins, but different fathers. And we know this to be true because you have women who have slept with different men, and one may have been a brown man, and one may have been a Caucasian man, and the baby will come out just like that, okay? So, um, and furthermore, let me tell you how cunning uh, Satan is. He, He puts it right in your face. Furthermore, that new demonic video with um, little Nas where he's in the garden and he does what? He has sex with Satan. They know the truth, my people, okay? So I'm not crazy. I know what I'm talking about, all right? So here we go. So now 
this is how and why you can see Cain slew Abel because of jealousy and the spirit of his father that was in his bloodline. This was also the first murder. Now, the father knew this was happening, hence the meaning of their names. Look it up. Look up their names. Cain means something. Abel means something. Your name means something. Your name tells who you are in your life. My name is Angelique. I'm an angel that's unique. Okay? So now you have, you have the, uh, the, um, the blood. So when the blood was spilled, right, and we find that in, uh, when the blood was spilled, when Cain slew Abel, the earth cried out as it speaks, speaks into the ground. So here we go. We go to Genesis 3, um, 10. And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. And Genesis 3.11. So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened his mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Okay? So he was cursed. He was marked with leprosy. And he was sent off to the land of Nod, and he was given a dog. I'm telling you, Moti is still graceful. You didn't have to give him the dog. He gave them the dog so that it would lick his wounds, because the dog was made to lick the wounds of the leprosy, which is why certain people love dogs a lot. Okay? So he went off to the land of Nod. The land of Nod, Nod means sleep. Okay? So now... This is where all the, this, this is where taxes came in. This is where uh, all this beast system that we're a part of right now originated from. Now, this covenant of sin that was made had to be eradicated. It had to be done away with because it was a covenant of death. Woo, God. This is why Yeshua was sent down to manifest into a baby, which is why he was called the lamb, because the lamb is for sacrifice. And that would atone through his blood a new covenant, which is the New Testament that was given at the Last Supper that gives us the Holy Spirit of life, not just for the children, because we're his children, and then the others that are not his children had no way to be saved. So the Mosai looked at the old covenant and said, this cannot happen because sin equals death. I've got to make a new one where I can save everybody that wants to be saved. Now, this is who I am. I am an apostle of the new covenant of the Holy Spirit of life. Glory. Therefore, the old is no more, and you must now learn the new. Okay? So now the spirit lives in the blood. When you are demon-possessed, it is because you have allowed Satan into your bloodline, and that belongs to Yeshua. His children, because Satan has children too now. Don't forget, he's the father of liars. But you gave Satan permission to use your light because he needs it for power. It is the light source. It is the soul. It is the breath of the Most High, so the wooer that he blew into us and gave us a soul. When he comes, he blows the light out of your body, and it becomes darkness because it becomes his, hence the legal curses, right? But we have a way out now, and that is to repent. That is to change. That's to come out of agreement with sin, come out of agreement with death, okay? But once you take the mark, you can't get him out. And that's why it's so important that everyone be inoculated. 
with his DNA, which they call RNA, which is really reptilian DNA. Come on now, speak Holy Spirit. So you can no longer say no or be a person because they need bodies. The disembodied spirits want to be manifested physically. They are tired of being vapor beings. They need a bloodline. And that's why they call it herd immunity. And this is how the walking dead will be. Do you think that the series is just a series? They're showing you. It's not just for fun. It's just not for entertainment, okay? As the, or the very fact that, check this out. The CDC has guidelines and FEMA on how to survive the, the, the zombie apocalypse. Go look it up. Zombie preparedness, that's what they call it. With everything that has been happening and coming true, you can really stop calling people conspiracy theorists at this point, okay, and start looking at the truth because it will definitely set you free. Now, Deuteronomy 32, 17, Song of Moses. They sacrifice to demons, not to Yod. Yod, okay, is in Hebrew means the head. This is why it's important that you now say this word, okay? Say it with me. I can't hear you, but I'm going to trust that you're saying it. I feel it in the spirit. Say Yod. Hear it? Say it again. Yod. Say it again. Yod. One more time. Yad. And the reason why I do it four times is because four breaks the spell. The spell is in one, two, three. See, we do everything in one, in three. Ready, set, go. Person, place, and thing. One, two, three. The spell is in three. Three little pigs. When you get off the third dimension and start rising up to the fourth, you come to the plane of thought. So instead of saying three things, say four. Break the spell. Okay, here we go. So now we've got Yod, okay? They sacrifice demons not to Yod, but to God. Now I want you to use that, but not for the Most High, not for the Messiah, not for any holy being, okay? Now, but to God with abominations, they provoked him to anger. All right. Now, here's why. Let me see. Did I write it down here? No, I think I said I was going to do it. All right, here we go. Back to my papers. Okay, here we go. So back to the words, right? Told you about Leviathan. So here you have God, right? Spelled backwards is dog. Okay? So you're talking about a totally different being. You're not talking about the Most High. You're not talking about the Messiah. You're talking about a totally different being. This is why we must learn the 22 letters of the Lord. We say Yod. And I know, my people, I know, I know, I know, I know. I've been through it. I've been through it. It's going to take time for you to get into this. And I'm not going to be like, you better say that. No. But I, if I hear you, I am going to correct you. Out of love. Okay? Now. So now you're dealing with dog. Okay? So they sacrifice the demons not to Yod, which is the head, but to, to God, which is a dog, which a dog, with abominations that provoke him to anger. Provoked who to anger? The Most High. Right? Same thing happening now. The Most High don't play. Let me tell you, there are plenty of times that Moses had to intercede for the Hebrew Israelites because El Yahuwah was ready to take them out. He was ready to be done of them because he was sick of their mess. Glory. And Moses had to remind him that you didn't just take them out of Egypt just to kill them yourself. Okay, so now we see they exist. Demons exist. 
okay? And there are people who sacrifice to them, all right? Now, a demon is very uncomfortable when it doesn't have a body, Woo! which is why he pulls every trick in the book to get one and keep one. And the main thing that he uses is belief, is belief, is fear. So here we go. Let's, let's, let's do this because we like to look at stuff. So we got belief. Right? And now we're going to break it down. Then we got be lie. Right? And what is that? Be the lie. Right? And then you got ease. So be the lie that was told to ease. Every time you believe something. Okay? You give the lie power. Right? And Satan is the father of liars. Okay, now here we go. So, fear is false evidence appearing real. So when you know the truth, how can you fear what you know? See, you're in fear because you do not know. And you're choosing not to know because you don't want to listen. And listening ears is for obedience. So open your ears to listen and obey the truth so that you will not have fear and he has no power over you. Now, this is very important. This is going to help a lot of people if you accept it. The very two demons that every other demon comes out of, the root demon where everything stems out from, and there's only two root demons, they sit all the way down in the earth. And they have branches that come out that are other demons that come from them. You know what that those demons are? Insecurity and inferiority. Let me say that again. Insecurity and inferiority. Stay with me tonight, y'all. I, I know you may be tired and stuff, but, but stay with me. It's, it's good. It's good. It's going to blow your mind when we get to the end. Whew, glory. Okay, so... According to Greek strong concordance, right, insecurity means prone to fail, okay? Um, uh, 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 no, excuse me. It's, um, insecurity is epi, epis, epistyle, which means prone to fail or to trip or dangerous or likely to fail. Okay? Now, inferiority, okay, means inadequate, an intense personal feeling of inadequacy in a belief that one is some way deficient or inadequate to others. Woo! Do y'all see? This is where everything stems from. Those two things, lust, addiction, uh, 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 lies, um, abuse, uh, alcoholism, um, sickness, uh, all of that, okay? So this is what he did with Eve. When he stepped to her and said to her, are you sure that's what's going to happen? He introduced insecurity because she became insecure about herself and inferiority thinking that she was going to be less than if she didn't do it. Okay. So here we go. So now, listen to me. When he made us, he made us perfect. And we are made perfect through the Holy Spirit. So stop saying I'm not perfect. Okay. It's a huge trick of Satan. What you're saying is that the Heavenly Father didn't make you perfect. We are perfect. Okay? Say it. I am perfect. Come on. I am perfect. I am perfect. I am perfect because he made us that way. And if we keep saying something that we're not, we will become that way. 
Now, out of these demons, right, which is Satan's true spirit of how he feels, he feels insecure. He feels inferior. Whoo! Comes every other demon manifesting itself in our lives. My people, we got to know that we know that we know who we are. And he felt this way because he didn't know his father. Not only biological, but the one that the Most High gave him, him himself. So Adam came along and he got mad. He became insecure in inferiority. See, two root demons that everything else comes out from because he was born without a soul. Woo! Glory, glory, glory. You better speak, Holy Spirit. You better speak. Because he was made from a dead body with no life source into him. Yet, it took him as his, the, the Most High took him as his own, and Satan couldn't see the forest before the trees. Adam represented life for the soul, and Satan death because of his father. Anubis, the god of death. Look up the picture of Anubis. It is a dog. Woo! So when we say God, and I know we've been taught for over 6,000 plus years, and it's all throughout the Bible, King James Version, this version, that version. When we say it, we are calling on Anubis. The God of death, which is why we must say Yad, for we're calling on the head. We're calling on the Most High, and we're calling on the Messiah because they are one in the same. So didn't I say? That you all are Yad. Woo. Say it with me. Didn't I say that you all are Yad? For it is written, we are all heads because we are all one, the Most High, and the Messiah. Walk in your authority. Anubis is the god of death. He is death. No life at all. Hence, once again, the walking dead, right? So his kingdom, all right, as him wanting to be the most high, will be a herd of dead people with a high mind. Hence, one new order of evil, one mind, one government, one police, one educational, one banking, one medical, one religion, one food, one employment. And it will all be under one rule of evil, of Satan, not the most high. All unnatural, GMO, down to the animals, which means genetically modified organism, an altered form from the original way of being. The entire earth is being terraformed for their survival. Woo, glory. Now, you that watch the news, y'all love CNN, y'all love uh, uh, MSN, Fox, all of them, right? You follow them. You trust everything that they say. Now, Dr. Sanjay Gupta said COVID is not going away. 
He said, learn to live with COVID. Here we go. Here we go. Bring it, Holy Spirit. Bring it. Now, let me show you about COVID. COVID is spelled C-O-V-I-D, right? Leviathan twists the word. The word is D-I-V-O-C, divoc. See that? Y'all ready? Divak means in Hebrew, possession of a malicious soul. Woo! It means divide in Latin. It means separate, divide, disturb, portion, tear away, destroy in two. Divide from the Yad gene and receive the God gene. God spelled backwards is dog. The dog is Anubis, the death deity from Egypt. So you are possessed with the evil spirit of Anubis. COVID, which is the va, is an occult meaning. So certificate of vaccination identification is to be permitted to be possessed with the evil spirit, a demon that allows you to continue doing things of the world as you become one with sin, with death, with Satan. Woo! COVID-19, the VOC-19, is the opposite of the protection of Psalm 91. There is a Satan. The Antichrist is on this earth. His name is Barack Obama. Barack is Satan in Hebrew. I saw Barack fall from lightning, fall like lightning from heaven. The deceiver of all mankind. Two times we voted him into office. We didn't pay no attention to the Lord and what he was standing for, the spirit that he was operating out of. All we could see is that he was a brown man that was a president and we was to be proud. Even I voted him in twice. And he's going to be in again. This time he's going to be the Pope. And the Pope has already joined forces with all the different super so-called powers of the world. One money system, one religion. They got an Abrahamic uh, uh, three churches over in in, uh, Saudi, is it Saudi? I think it's Saudi Arabia. Don't call me on it, but you can look it up. They got a mosque, a synagogue, and a, and a, 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 a church. There's, it's called Christ Islam. One religion in one. A, a Catholic, the holy cat, the sphinx, the mother of Satan. My people. Come on. Vatican means diving serpent. They got a serpent in the, the, the hall. It's a serpent that's right behind them. It looks like it's, it's Yeshua uh, coming. It says the resurrection of, of, of Christ, right, coming out from a, 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 a nuclear bomb. When did 
the Messiah have anything to do with a nuclear bomb. That is showing you that they're going to bring him back to life through the EMP. My people, we got to wake up. They are creating hybrids. Look it up. It's called Human 2.0. Look it up. real and if you're not empowered with what I just told you that means that you're allowing fear to take over that means that you did not receive the truth that the Holy Spirit gave to us you should be empowered right now to know that you are all God and even though I'm speaking this to you. And even though I'm teaching this to you, there are going to be many people that are going to be offended. How dare she say that? God is who? No. I said it. I will not retract it unless the Holy Spirit tells me so. I am teaching you the right way. I am teaching you the new. It means something. We're calling on deities that have nothing to do with the Father. And it gets us in trouble. This is why he said go back to the original. Go back to the Hebrew. That we will know that we know that we know. And that we won't be fooled. Because many, many will be deceived. But I want more than eight people. I want more than eight people on my ark because I'm the woman Moses. I want more than, 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 than eight people. I want more than, 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 what was it, four, I forgot how many people it was that got saved from Egypt. I want more than that. I want the masses. And I want us to be on the right side because the battle is already won. And that's a deception that you think that it's not. Already won. Whew, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you. Raise your hands, we're going to pray. Thank you, Father. This information which you have bestowed upon me to give to your people. Father, let it go far, let it go wide, let it go to where it needs to go. Let it touch the ears, let it touch the heart, let it touch the souls and the spirit of those that you wanted to go to, Father. Not me. You know who it needs to go to, Father. I am nothing but a vessel. Father. We love you. We honor you. We thank you for giving us this message. No matter how hard it may be to hear, no matter how hard it may be unbelievable, uh, untrustworthy, it is the truth. It's your truth. It's the truth that will set us free. No longer shall we be in bondage with these words that keep us bound with falseness with us worshiping who is not you. We want to know your truth. We want to be your truth. And, Father, let your spirit go out. Let it touch those over in Afghanistan. I received the message that your people in your church, they went to glory. You, 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 they felt the intercessors praying, praying for them before they were martyred. Father, keep your, your people where they need to be, in the, in the secret place of the Most High. Whatever it is that they're missing not to be in the secret place of the Most High, let them be there, Father. And if they shall be martyred, Father, let them go with you, Daddy. I know that this information that I'm putting out, I will be hated for your name's sake. I know that.
but you gave it to me. And if you didn't give it to me, then I wouldn't know that I'm capable of doing it. But because you gave it to me, I know that I'm capable of doing it. And I operate in my authority to do your work. And there are times when it make it hard. There are times when it make it hard for each and every one of us because this information, you can't hold this. You've got to be a vessel for him and go out and tell those that will listen. Don't hold this for yourself. Save as many people as you can. I can't do it alone. We have to be his mouthpiece. And give them the protection that they need, Father. Release your angels. I release your warring angels. I release the angel Michael to go to those places that we may go to before we even get there, to subdue the atmosphere and for us to be in contact with those people that we're supposed to be in contact with. I release the angels to Afghanistan. Glory. Even though I know certain things have to happen to bring forth your word, because it's your word that's coming to be. This is why Daniel was in mourning for 21 days. This is why Daniel was like, what in the world is going on? And this is just a little bit of what you are revealing to us. But now I understand why Daniel went to fasting and prayer for 21 days. He didn't care nothing about food because of this that is here now that he saw before it was even here that you told him to seal it up and put it away. That scroll that was written on the front and the back of woe and lamentation. But I know that you're doing it because you have to get rid of evil. Evil was never meant to be on your earth. This is the final cleansing. It will be exactly as you want it and need it to be. And we will be living and breathing love, happiness, joy, peace with the Messiah, with you, with the Holy Spirit, as kings and priests, procreating and bringing forth more generations that know you, that will not fall. That is the end result. To be able to walk among the Messiah. Never will we have to ever again pick up a Bible, pick up a book and say, hey, know Yeshua, know Yahuwah, come to the Holy Spirit, be baptized. For now, when it comes, when you come with your mark and you put the mark on those that are saved, that Hebrew letter that you give us, that it will be in our innermost being, that the knowledge that I'm given now, we already know. But because we were put to sleep, because we couldn't be supreme beings of evil, it is now time for us to wake up. And the Holy Spirit will be endowed in us forever. We will not ever lose the Holy Spirit again. Everything we do will be in service of you. And we will live holy and anointed forever. Our Father who art in the skies, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let it be so. I bring your will down, Father. Glory. Let's take communion. Oh, let me see if I can get to this way first. <laughs> okay.
Got it. Ooh, God, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. How? And we say, thank you, Father. As we enter your courts of heaven, we say we remember your covenant and we thank you. Blessed be you, raise your breath. Blessed be you, O Adonai, Ayah, ruler of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Excuse me. Blessed be you, O Adonai, Ayah, ruler of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Thank you. And I break it for each and every one of you. And raise your kiddish cup. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, sovereign ruler of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Thank you. Woo! Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Father. Oh, um, tonight, um, 12 a.m., join us for day for so day five of our fasting and prayer and whatever word that the Father's going to reveal to us, oh, it's been so beautiful, so wonderful. I love each and every one of y'all. Um, um, Benjamin, do you have anything to say? If so, you can unmute your phone. Just thank you for the opportunity, opportunity to join you all. You're very welcome, and thank you. All right. Be blessed, everyone. I love you all. Whoo, glory, glory. Share this video. Again, the dialing number is 551-240-6485, 12 a.m. I'll see y'all then. Take care.